I mean, it was powerful where we went. And as we were going, we were going to a place called Mago National Park. And as we drove through Mago National Park, now it's not like a national park in America. Right. I mean, you got wildebeest here, you got elephants here, lions here, if you happen to see them, wild boars, I mean, vultures, everything. And we riding through, and as we rode through, we had these, these lions came up to the, uh, to the vehicle, and he asked, hey, look, I want you to come on and get out. He said, my name is Saset. Saset. I said, Saset, okay. I want you to show you all around. So we, we stopped the car. Reluctantly, we got out. And he started taking us around. He said, I want to show you where the lions stay. I want to show you where they reside. So we walked out. This was a very exciting thing. And lo and behold, just that African luck, a pack of hyenas walked up. And Saset which shocked us because, you know, we got real nervous. We said, we know what this is. Right, right, right. He walked up to him and said a few words. They shook hands and hyenas just walked on off. As we kept going back to the lion's area, he was talking to the wildebeest. He was talking to the vultures. He was talking to the cheetahs. He was friends with everybody. Right. So we got to the lion's den. You know, he showed us all the intricacies of lion life, things we would have never seen on National Geographic. And we were like, wow, this is beautiful. We got to pet the little cubs and everything. Wow. Stayed there about two or three hours. Then we were on our way. We had a 10-day trip. We wouldn't be back through Margo National Park again for another 10 days. And as we were leaving, uh, you know, we just thought of how good a time we had and how good a friend we had made in this Sasset. And so we left, and 10 days later, we drove back, and we saw a scene, one of the most violent scenes I've ever seen in my life. We saw a scene, it was a group of male lions, and they were ripping Sasset apart. And we stopped the vehicle, we was like, what's going on? You know what, this is a good guy, you know, from whatever we had met, we liked this guy. And they just ripped him apart. And as we stopped the vehicle, I guess one of the lions, I'm sitting there thinking, these are some real savage beasts. I guess why they call them lions, you know. And one of the lions looked, it must have caught that look I had, and ran up to the car, and opened up the door and dragged me out the car. And that ain't a good look. 600 pound beast got you up against the car. I said, this is not a good look. He said, I saw you looking. He said, I know what you're thinking. He said, you think I'm a monster? You think we are uncivilized and savage, don't you? Go ahead. I said, well, you are ripping the dude apart. I mean, I, I don't understand. He said, I'm going to tell you a story, and if you still feel this way at the end of the story, then so be it. Do as you choose. He said, but you, I'm going to tell you a story. He said, some time ago, this Sasset came into our group, and normally we don't allow foreign males into our group. But this guy seemed to know everybody. This was a few, I've never seen a lion. He knew everything in the wilderness. And we figured we could use this to our advantage, you know. And we let him in, and the first thing he began to do is start constantly sharing information. He was very vibrant. He said, one day, the lions, we came back from protecting the area. That's our set right there. And he said he was... Standing around, he was very, uh, we'd never seen him quite this emotional. He was a very bright guy. But he was telling all the lions and the lionesses that were around. He was talking to him, and he said, look, the reason that you got to struggle to survive, the reason that you have to kill to survive, the reason that you hunt the wildebeest is because you don't know the powerful one. You don't know the powerful one, and if you knew the powerful one, you wouldn't have to fight to survive. You wouldn't have to kill to survive. You wouldn't have to fight with the hyenas. All the animals in the kingdom could get along and it'd all be fine. Come on, come on. And I mean, he was just going and he said, the lion told me, he said, as we walked up, we were like, we've never heard anything like this before. And he had the whole cubs and the lioness as a captive audience. And then he said, at one moment, he said, I'm going to show you the powerful one. And if you just turn your life over to the powerful one, all your issues, all your worries will be gone. And he pulled out a picture and showed them all. He said, this is the powerful one. And the lion that was talking to me, he said, you know, my first instinct, I said, I, I, ain't, I swear that's a damn hyena. He said, but we ain't know exactly what's going to say, but if I'm not mistaken, that's a hyena. And he said, you know, we, we saw him and everybody was moved by it. He said, the first day after that happened, we came back and we saw the first sign something was wrong. Usually, when the lionesses make a kill, they come right up to us. And I get to go eat first. Never before has this ever happened, but when I went up to eat, all the lionesses lined up against me, wouldn't even let me eat first. He said, that's strange, because we've never had an issue like that as lions. By the second day we came home, normally it's a real close relationship between the lionesses and the cubs. These days, the cubs are just walking around, 
doing what they were doing. Nobody was protecting them. By the third day we got there, they weren't hunting no more. They was eating trees and grass and bark. Their teeth started to get, uh, uh, you know, dull because they weren't eating what they were normally used to eating. He said they were getting smaller and slimmer. He said by the fourth day, things really started to get bad. Fourth day, usually, usually you know, those cheetahs, man, they fast. We don't like those cheetahs. And whenever we get a chance, we go out there and we kill them and we'll kill their babies too if we get a chance. We don't want that kind of competition. Why were the cheetahs encroaching on lion territory? Then killed four cubs that day. Because the lionesses were off doing other things and they weren't concerned about the well-being. We started seeing things go, go. We were wondering what is going on. By the fifth day, the cubs were telling the lioness what to do. Had them running around, scared to even... Tell the cubs, they used to discipline the cubs. There was no question now. The cubs were disciplining the lions. Oh, man. Say by the seventh day, say by the seventh day, it was over. He said, the seventh day we came, he said, if I never see something like this again for the rest of my life, I will ever have to see it again. He said, the lionesses were more fierce this day than we had seen them maybe ever. And they were on the hunt. And they hunted a, 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 a strong male bull and they slaughtered them. And we got excited. We said, man, they back on track. He said, brother, they killed the bull and began to drag the bull about a mile over to the east. And we followed them, and we stopped about a quarter mile from where they landed in the den of the hyenas. And they took the dead food, handed it over to the hyenas, laid down and watched in some type of euphoria as these filthy dogs ate the food. And do you know what these dogs did ahead, after these six hyenas fed them the food? Go ahead, bro. He said they killed them. Yeah, they killed them. They Brutally. He said, by the eighth day, we get back. We look on one side. And I can't quite describe it, but the lionesses were mating with each other. Don't ask me. I don't know. I don't know what this is. Uh -oh. And the male cubs were on the other side mating with each other. He said, so we all gathered together. We said, wait a minute, there's a problem in Lion Town. Right. So we got together. We pulled all the elders together. We pulled everybody together. We said, what is going on? And as we began to look back, we said, you know, things started to change. The moment Sasset came into our presence. Right. They said, but when things really started to go wrong, we never remember. They said, just the first time we all were sure. He pulled up a hyena and told us that that is who we were supposed to be showing love and concern and consideration for. And after that time, we've had nothing but turmoil and chaos. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And so we were clear on when it had started, but the only question we couldn't answer was, why would a lion be teaching other lions to love their enemy? They said one of the elder lions said there was a myth, there was a legend. I didn't want to bring it up because we're not much in the legends, but my father told me. He said, years ago, about the time Sasset would have been born, there was a brutal ambush that was done by the hyenas on the lionesses and the cubs. And they killed a the whole pride. And we found all the bodies, he said, except for they didn't find one body. And as the legend has it, the hyenas took this baby hyena back to the hyena's den and raised it, baby lion, back to the hyena's den and raised it, this lion, in all the ways of the hyena. And as the legend goes, one day that lion would come back to us and create turmoil, chaos, and confusion in our community. And then we would have to have a redeemer that would come and would save us and get us out of this condition. It's just a legend. And so they sat for a while and they pondered and they came to the conclusion. He said, we came to the conclusion, not only will we have to remove Sasset, but we will have to forget all the things that we had learned. We have really, to some degree, forgotten what it's like to be a lion again. He said, but it really doesn't matter whether we know exactly what it is to be a lion. That we know that this ain't it. So all the things that we've been taught, we got to get rid of. And it starts with stopping Sasset from doing what he's been doing. And so that's why you saw what you saw. He said, do you understand? I said, I understand. He said, now I hope you don't. I said, wait, wait, wait. He said, if I can give you any piece of advice, don't ever apologize for being a lion. That's right. The reason the world loves you and respects you is because you are a very, you are a lion, you're a hunter. You're a powerful hunter. And you do whatever's necessary to survive. And everybody respects you because you're a lion. 